here at Black Acre. I'm Jamie Sheen, and uh, we're at Black Acre Collective. Uh, this is a studio that we share with uh, Nico Hurtado, uh, Carlos Rojas, and Eric Taylor. And um, shop's been here about four years, right? Uh, five years. Five years. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've been interested in art since as long as I can remember. I mean, as a kid, always, you know, drawing and doing things like that. But I'm um, really getting into tattooing, you know, around 15 or so, uh, just because my heroes were into it, you know, different punk rock musicians and skateboard uh, professionals and things. And um, got into tattooing in the early 90s. Um, you know, in early 2000s, opened up uh, Ignition Tattoo Studio and uh, Shortly after, uh, Nico Hurtado came over, started working with us, and um, that's when I got to meet Matt. At that time, he was 18 years old. Well, at that time, he was even younger than that, but by the time he was, yeah, 16, for sure. By the time he was starting to come around, uh, after he had found interest in art, uh, he was about 18 years old, and that's when uh, I think uh, Nico had decided to apprentice him. So, that coming full circle, Nico opens up Black Anchor, Matt becomes his apprentice, and then I come to work over here. And that was about, well, like we said, five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah, I was about 18, I think, when I started doing art. I had moved in with my brother, started living with him, and I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life. I was working at Target at the time. He, I was helping him make needles, set up for him, break down for him for extra money. <clears throat> and just seeing his life and just seeing how like what he got to do and just seeing everybody he met and all these people that I were like were like minded um, I just got super in, super interested and he uh, I asked him if he could teach me a tattoo and he's like well first you need to learn how to draw so I took a couple art classes he told me to fill up a sketchbook and um, I filled up the sketchbook within a month there were just like, really terrible drawings <laughs> It's well. It's funny for me to think about, think back on him before he drew, before he painted. You know what I mean? It seems like so long ago, but it's happened in such a, a short amount of time, and it's it's cool to uh, to think back on when you uh, were struggling with your first drawings. <laughs> it was tough, man. They were they're rough. I still have the sketchbooks too. I, I sometimes I go back to them and I'll or I'll find them and I'll look through them and I'm like, man, like. It's crazy it's been like a long road and it, it's been a long road but doesn't like it's been only like seven years six years or something you know yeah and uh it's been fun you know i'm very grateful for my brother to help me you know teach me how to well with tattooing uh, tattooing is, is unique i think in the as far as like inspiration for me with tattooing it's for early on in my career it was so much just dictated by the client, you know, because you're sitting in a shop a lot of times and people just kind of come in with this idea and then on the spot you're just there to kind of bring that to that illustration to life or just to bring their idea to life, you know. And, and so I think early on, especially, you know, back when I started, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, it was really dictated by the client or just dictated off you copying flash off the wall you know so now later on in my career where I get to choose more of what I want to do I'm more drawn to doing um, I guess just more like photorealism but something that based off of photorealism but having to make decisions um, f for the longevity of the tattoo you know and, and, and making it more tattooable, you know, and not just trying to just strictly, you know, copy something, trying to think about how's it gonna last. Especially contrast, because, you know, with tattooing, the main challenge that I, I find, especially trying to do photorealism, some, when you're using a lot of value, or, or using a lot of, especially mid to light tones, is the challenge with a tattoo is, as a tattoo heals, the lights get darker, and the darks get lighter. That's the nature of it, right? You know, you put black in, and at first, that black is super, super black, but as the tattoo heals and the skin grows over the top of it, that just 
lightens up because it has this clear layer over the top of it that's reflecting light. And almost the reverse happens with light colors. They look really light, nice and true at first, but then as the skin grows over the top of it, depending on the complexion of the person's skin, that's gonna tint that light color. So that's just one challenge you have in trying to recreate you know, a photo or to recreate something from life and skin. Uh, with tattooing, um, I think what inspires me is <clears throat> more of like the realism um, aspect of tattooing. You know, I I really like traditional looking tattoos as well, um, but I think more of like re like realistic tattoos and like say like Boris, uh, he was out here recently guest spotting and watching him tattoo really like that kind of changed something for me. Just the way he did it, it was more like painterly. It wasn't so much of like, like just like tattooing it. He, the way he just had done, had did everything, it was just way different. And it kind of changed my mind. And I was like, wow, like you could do the same thing in the tattoo. You just gotta do the do the work to it, I guess. Like and, and figure that out. Um, so I, I think that like that, and just like the way my brother tattoos, and the just like the palette he uses. Um, it's very like very painterly, uh, so I guess that kind of stuff more inspires me. I wanted to jump in there too, just because you mentioned Boris, well, and your brother as well. But like both, especially Boris's trip just out here, uh, really changed things for me as well. Just technically too, but just watching him and his approach to it, it is so painterly. And yeah. your brother is probably the most painterly tattooer that I've seen, but. Um, and then our conversations too about yeah. how we set up our palettes or how you set up your palette actually and you know me trying to learn from that but and talking about how how we're mostly in our darks and then our mids and yeah. then very rarely in, in our, our lights. lights yeah dude just that information right there totally changed so many things like i i i, I was doing that on certain levels but just us reinforcing that totally changed things for me for sure and that's totally like that's that is how i relate tattooing and painting together yeah really is the palette now more and it's super inspiring too to see like boris and like nico like the way like to see nico's palette from when i first started being around him and seeing like the colors he used oh. and see how much that palette has grown into the palette he uses today and how much his work has changed and how much better it's gotten in the little amount of five six years you know that's a big it's a big jump yeah um, from you know, looking from more realistic, but also for like a longer, better, exactly. longer lasting tattoo, like it's not going to go anywhere. You know? Yeah, and he's making it, it, it's almost like he's not copying the photo, how you were saying. Right. It's like you're making it better. Like yeah, you always want to exactly. make it better than the photo because mm -hmm. what's the point of making a photo realistic if it could be, if you could take a photo? You know, it's done by hand and everything, but if you can make it better, then it's, it's, it's even better. Uh, how do I keep the balance between tattooing and painting? That is a really good question. Uh, well, for me, it's dictated by how disciplined I am, but more just how crazy my tattooing schedule is. Luckily, at the point where I'm at, I I, I have a lot of you know, I, I, my appointments are consistent, and I, I'm staying busy with tattooing. I want to paint as much as I can, just because the more I paint just the more smooth tattooing goes for me. And it's all in palette, it's all in the palette that I use, but it's more in like just recognizing value in painting and just just being able to try things, you know, in, in painting that I, I, I can't try just on skin, you know? And that's the most awesome thing to me about being a tattooer is that at, even at 21, 22 years, it's constantly challenging for me and I'm constantly trying to do things uh, in a different way, you know, and uh, it it's like a never-ending thing. It's a never-ending growth, and I'm grateful for that. But anyways, back back to what I was trying to say. It, I think the um, the more I paint, the more I see the similarities in tattooing, and the way that we try and tattoo here at Black Anchor seems to be more on a realistic s side. You know, that just seems to be what most people are drawn to here, um, what we're asked to do, but. Um, I think if I 
stay disciplined with painting, I have to wake up early and get it done before I come in and tattoo because tattooing is unpredictable and you're dealing with another person. So by the time I get out of here, it's usually late and I'm tired and uh, then I really don't have the strength to come home and paint. So I try and do it before I get to work. Where Matt's the total opposite. You know, it, Sometimes it, it's, we high five yeah. about 4, 4 a.m. Yeah. 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. He's posting or commenting on Instagram. I'm waking up, posting, I'm commenting on Instagram. To go to sleep. He's going yeah. to sleep. So yeah. we have totally opposite schedules and it works somehow. I think it's um, I think it's hard sometimes to tattoo all day and then go home and paint because you're kind of just spent. Like you kind of just blew your load on like the tattoo you did, you know. And then you go home and you're kind of like, "Fuck, man, I'm tired." Like my mind just you're mentally done, you know. Um, sometimes I think you have to get through that to you, like you tattoo and then go home and take a break, maybe sleep for an hour or two, wake up, stay up all night, and paint. You know, if you have. If you can't do that, you know, if you don't have family or something, you know, I know having a family and all that comes into play because you have to spend time with them and, you know, uh, do all that. Uh, but I think it's super important that you, that if you're tattooing and painting, you have to make time for both um, because painting is going to help you make decisions. It's going to make you like experiment more, like you could make a decision and not really care about it, but with a tattoo, you have to. Be really conscious about what you're gonna do because if not, it, it, it might not come out as good as you think, or you know, it might come out better, or whatever. But when you're painting, you have more, or I guess, error for mistake, I guess. Or you know, yeah. Uh, you could try something new. You could try a new color. You can mix a color and put it down. Just but experiment. Exactly. So the more you paint, it's gonna help you tattoo, or it's gonna help your tattooing because you're gonna learn that, and then you're gonna bring that into tattooing, and then do that on the tattoo and you know sometimes it works i'm matt hurtado i'm jay machine we're at black anchor collective in asperia california and uh we just wanted to invite you all out here anytime to check out our gallery we have uh fortunate enough to have a lot of original artwork from a lot of amazing artworks artists from all over the world but southern california in particular and um, we'd like to see you all here come by anytime we also have some great tattoo artists as well with great portfolios and you know hopefully you get a tattoo <laughs> yeah please please get a tattoo <laughs> <laughs> another is when the sun goes down and the night come around and the bar come a rolling in when they cast the night, the gold dance one time and an open bar to win. Hear a punk rock song and we sing along. Everything gonna be alright. Another.